Let's talk about the news coming out of Senegal. The new president of Senegal is making moves. He stated that he is going to be auditing Senegal's oil, gas, and mining sectors. This is huge. Like he is going to go over the contracts. He's going to see what kind of deal they have going on. This is just going to make a huge impact if it's going to be done the right way. And from the looks of it, this president is going to make his people proud. And let's not forget, he was the right or is the right hand of Songo, who the people wanted to be in that position in the first place. If you remember, both of them were arrested, the president now and the prime minister. And, you know, Maki Sol tried everything. The previous leader tried everything to make sure that this guys will not make it to the election. But it didn't happen because the people of Senegal said, no, we're not going to let this happen. So the Senegalese capital, protesters spent most of Sunday afternoon on the run from the police. Supporters of various Senegalese opposition parties fled tear gas after turning out en masse to mark what would have been the start of the campaign period had President Macky Sall not scrapped the election. The president is violating the constitution in a very flagrant manner. Senegalese people are here to protest peacefully against injustice and were fired on with tear gas. And they are a great example for the rest of us, right, that are sitting and waiting for everything to happen the way it's supposed to. You know, sometimes if our governments are refusing to listen to us, our leaders are not really interested in entertaining our thoughts and concerns, we have to demand it, right? These people went out protesting, showing that they mean business. I talked about it uh, quite a bit right when the election was postponed by Macky Sall he changed the date because he knew it was coming for him after he changed it the people said no after he arrested Sonko the people said no and then eventually he had to reschedule it and voila we are where we are right now and I'm happy for the people of Senegal because they really wanted this duo to be in office and here they are they are in office and making moves already and we love to hear it we love to see it. We hope and pray that they continue to deliver and they continue to protect themselves because we all know if you're really for the people, you know what's coming for you. So they really need to be vigilant and, you know, we just want them to succeed because they are for the people. And speaking of uh, these two leaders, I believe France is in trouble because a video of Sonko went viral. Prime Minister Sonko, and he had quite an interesting thing to say about France. It is high time for France to lift its knee off our neck and put an end to this unjust oppression. Centuries of misery, human trafficking, colonization, and neocolonization have caused immeasurable suffering. It's time to put an end to this cycle of oppression. It's high time for France to leave us alone. It's time for France to take a cue from its European neighbors and learn a valuable lesson in independence. Germany is the leading economic power in Europe, significantly surpassing France, which is ranked as the third or fourth largest economic power globally. Germany does not exploit any country, any colony. I can mention Italy, I can mention Spain, who had colonies before but who do not exploit anyone, who do not interfere, who do not impose leaders in their former colonies. On what grounds does France believe it can continue to impose leaders on us and make choices on our behalf? This must come to an end. And the emerging Africa, the African youth, the African elites, and the African diaspora all stand united in saying no, it cannot continue any longer. France's hypocrisy is evident and pervasive in daily life. Let's examine the cases of Mali and Chad as prime examples of this hypocrisy. In Chad, where the constitutional process has been interrupted, France applauded and its president visited to officially consecrate the new king's coronation ceremony. In Mali, where it is not the constitutional process that has been interrupted, but the transition process, France has condemned and even packed up its things to say that it is leaving Mali. That's hypocrisy. It's the double standard. It is the double language that France employs in its dealings with Africa. 
During our questioning of Mr. Jean-Yves Le Drian regarding the situation in Ivory Coast and France's decision to allow a third term, he provided a clear explanation. He stated that while he accepted the third term for Ouattara, he refuses it for Belarus. He emphasized that France has condemned the situation in Belarus and has actively encouraged the European Union to do the same. Le Drian explains that in Belarus, millions protested. Unlike Ivory Coast, where there were no mass demonstrations on the streets. This is how France deals with African issues. Personally, we expect absolutely nothing from France. We desire her to cease meddling in our matters so that the people of Senegal can exercise their freedom of choice rather than being influenced by France's selection of a candidate using the tactics we are aware of. We begin by targeting individuals, adorning them with the Legion of Honor or a similar knightly rank, enlisting them in Masonic lodges, and informing them to prepare themselves as they will be next in line. Even the hypothesis that Macky Sall may not succeed, we know who is being prepared by France. This must come to an end. It will not occur in this manner any longer. Let's be clear. We have absolutely nothing against the French people. In France, both political and citizen voices are rising to hold and express the same discourse as the one I'm currently presenting to you. For example, the deputies, such as Mrs. Frédéric Dumas, who regularly speaks on the platform of the Assembly, who regularly writes to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, since she is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, to raise this unfair behavior of France towards Africa, hold the same speech as us. The same Mr. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Jean-Paul Lecoq, André Chassain, all deputies, hold the same discourse as us and hundreds and hundreds of other voices like other nonprofit organizations, are doing remarkable work in the same direction. We strongly urge France to listen to the voices that speak to it about our plan for a more collaborative, fairer, and sustainable partnership between Africa and France. It is crucial that we work together towards a future that is equitable, just, and environmentally conscious. If she listens, I believe we'll have beautiful days ahead in our collaboration together. If he doesn't know how to cut it, thinking he can continue to function like in the time of our grandfathers, this African youth no longer accepts it. France must make preparations for a definitive break and completely withdraw from Africa. Africa belongs to Africans, not France. She belongs to no one else, neither China, nor the United States, nor anyone else. So clearly, this new government is for the people, for the youth, and for changing the narrative and they've been very open and honest about them being pan-african so i mean we couldn't have asked for a better leadership at this point so yeah we just continue to watch and see what they're doing um how they're moving and we hope to see them join forces with burkina faso mali and niger because these three have been leading by example anyways fam let me know down below what your thoughts are about the new audit that's about to happen when it comes to oil gas and mining sector and also what are your thoughts about sonko and faye the new president i'm angel zalalem i'll see you on the next one stay blessed bye